So this is part three of my comparison between the Gibson R9 and the Nick Huber Orca 59. Now, um, I've made two more videos before this, one where I played them through a Bartel amp and one where I played them through the Matchless HC30. So going into this, uh, just jokingly, but they're one all. I preferred the R9 with the Bartel. It had a bit more character and sort of um, bounce to it. And then with the Matchless, I actually preferred the Orca the way it compresses and um, the fact that it's so dynamic under the fingers and isn't too shrill on the high end, uh, really enjoyed it with that amp. So we're now neck and neck and we're about to use the Rift Ainsley Lister, which is my favorite amp for Les Pauls actually. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, just a very quick rundown if you're not aware. The R9 is the 1959 reissue that Gibson make. Mine is a 60th anniversary, but it's the same as all the other ones, really. And it follows as close as possible the original guitars, or at least one of them. Uh, it's got custom buckers in it, which I'm potentially looking to change. I also want to change the pots to 550k pots and maybe try and remove some of the muddiness that it does have. But overall, I really enjoy it. The Nick Huber, on the other hand, uh, made with many of the similar materials, mahogany and maple, but it has a Brazilian rosewood fretboard and it has Housel pickups. Uh, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, wrongly. Uh, they're quite different from the custom buckers. They're less of a sledgehammer. They're a bit more compressed. I think they're slightly lower output, just judging by the volume and the way they play. Um, the guitar on the whole is less bouncy, less shrill, less rock and roll. But on the other hand, it's so pleasing to the ear. It's got beautiful, beautiful roll off. Um, and so altogether, I, would never, I wouldn't be able to decide which I prefer. I prefer the looks of the R9. And for, for many things, the sound of the Orca, uh, it's just got a clarity and a gentleness. Maybe that's not the right word, but you know, it's really nice. <laughs> anyway, going into this one, Let's just hear the first clips and we'll see what it sounds like.
So the way I set this rift amp is the way that Ainsley Lister does. He, he's um, set mine up for me as well. And that is with a lot of preamp in there. So it's around seven on the dial. Uh, master volume pretty low down. It's got a bright switch engaged, which is its default position. You can pull it out, but I haven't. And then I've got the three tone controls all around the same just before 12. And I've got some presence and some reverb. Now that means the amp is reasonably well compressed uh, no matter what you do with it, but it clears up so nicely with your roll off. Both of the guitars I started, the volume were probably on about four on the pots. So just to give you an idea. Now this sounds to me like the Orca is more compressed naturally when you listen to it. And in this case, I think it favors the R9's bounciness and the sort of more brightness that it has, uh, which still shines through. Um, so yeah, let's listen to a bit more. As you start to wind up, the muddiness of the R9 comes through a little bit more. It's a little bit muddled in the low mids and the low end, which can be a bit of an issue when you want to try and hit notes down there. Um, whereas the Orca does deal with that a little bit better. It's got less high end, but it's also got more clarity in the low end. So the, other, the, the only negative to it is a little bit less lively overall. The whole playing and feel of it is a little bit less direct. The, the attack is slower. So with each guitar, there are pluses and minuses. Overall, the muddiness of the R9 might put you off it completely, whereas I don't think anything would put you off the Orca completely, except that the low end, I don't know if you notice when I use my thumb to play the low E, there's a bit of flubbiness there. And I noticed that through the other two videos, but I hadn't mentioned it yet. Now I wanted to talk about the feel and play, the way that they play. Um, the Orca is set up beautifully, reasonably low, um, reasonably low string height, action but not too low um, uh, 
the neck is really quite big. But I thought it was going to be a problem, but somehow it's not. So I don't know how that is. It feels big in the hand, but then it's so easy to play. Whereas I've actually struggled with the R9 from time to time. Using my thumb over the top and then playing whole chords, I've sometimes found it hard to get up and down. So I don't know if the width of the fretboard is, is how different it is, but something about the way the orca's neck rolls around makes it so easy to play. I mean, often when you pick up a guitar for the first time, you can find it a bit awkward to play, but not with the orca. It felt very comfortable, um, slightly more comfortable than the R9 does. So uh, in that sense, it's really beautiful to play. Um, everything else about it is so familiar that it's barely worth talking about. It feels like you're playing um, a Les Paul, a really, really good Les Paul. Uh, and the shape, like I said in the first video, the shape of the body, even though I don't find it as attractive, and I like the pick guard on the R9, the Orcas is really comfortable. I feel like you could sit for longer with it. It's not a light guitar though. I think it's heavier than my R9 and I was surprised when I first picked it up. You always expect these boutique guitars to be really light and I'm sort of glad it's not. There's a lot of substance to it. Anyway, one more playing clip. Let's hear what that sounds like. So I've listened back to this demo quite a few times and although both guitars I think sound really good, I just about pref prefer my R9. Um, with the compression that this Rift amp has, it takes away some of that top end, makes it more pleasant. And although it is muddier and not as clear sounding as the Orca, um, it's probably bias, you know, here, but there's something more bouncy, lively and attacking about it that I personally really enjoy. So at this point, I mean, they're pretty much neck and neck. You know, if, if you could want a great, if you want a great Les Paul, either of these uh, guitars will, you know, probably blow you away. They blow me away anyway, because they're just so great to play. But so far, the R9 being my comfort zone is, is you know, is still up there for me. 
it may be objectively not as good, you know, for recording especially. But for me, there's something more rock and roll looking about it. So for live performance, I'd love to, to use the R9. We've got one more video to make about these. And uh, that's going to be with a two rock using some pedals. We haven't used any pedals yet. So anyway, I hope you've been enjoying this little series. Uh, I'm really lucky to get to use this, this guitar. Um, yeah, Martin, who's lent it to me, has also got some other Huber guitars as well as others. So he's going to let me borrow those. I think it's a really fascinating sort of dive into the world of this really high-end boutique guitar uh, making. You know, the production quality of this guitar is absolutely incredible. And in the last video, I'm going to do some more close-ups of the neck heel and the, the joins and everything. So you can see that. I've tried to spread all of this through the four videos to keep it interesting. So anyway, um, yeah, I hope you've been enjoying it. And uh, as I say every video, I'm giving this away when I hit 6,000 subs. It's the King Tone, the Duelist, one of my favorite pedals. This is my old one that doesn't have the external dip switches. Just subscribe and comment, and when I hit 6,000, I'll send it anywhere in the world. So cheers, see you next time.